Hey, what's going on everyone? So today I want to show you how you can install 7-inch round headlights on your Hummer H3 for around $200 to $250. Now I know this is kind of a long video, but some parts of it will be skippable. One of the reasons why this video is so long is I kind of designed it from the perspective of someone who doesn't have much experience working on their own vehicles. So if you guys do have that experience, you can actually go ahead and skip even more parts of the video. And another reason why this video is so long is there are a few different ways how we could do things. And I want you guys to pick the best way that's going to suit your needs. So today we're going to be installing these lights on a 2006 Hummer H3, but this will work on any model year of the H3, including the H3 Alpha and the H3T. So any H3 you got, it's going to work. So the way we're actually able to mount this light to the H3 is by using Lay's Design's brand new 7 inch round headlight retrofit adapter. And the best part about this install is that we don't need to do any permanent modifications. So this modification is reversible if you ever need to go ahead and put these stock headlights on for any reason. Lay's Designs is also selling a solution for the fog lights as well. Basically they've designed this bracket that allows you to run this universal 4 inch fog light. Uh, I figure I'd mention this now because I do want to make a video on it, but I figure that's going to take a couple months to come out. So yeah. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and get the headlights and this, you could do it all at the same time. And the best part about it is they are plug and play. The only thing you have to do is plug this in the opposite way it's supposed to go in, and then it will work fine. So here is a really quick overview of what we're going to be doing in this video. To start, we're going to need to go ahead and remove the front end, then take our stock headlight out. After that, we're going to need to add a new harness. Don't worry, it's basically plug and play. After that, we can go ahead and take our 7-inch headlight plus our Lay's Design 7-inch adapter and put it in one another, as you can see here, and then we can go ahead and put it on, kind of like this. This is not how it's going to go on in real life, but this is just to show the concept. Also, if your new 7-inch headlights have some type of halo on it, there will be some additional steps that we will need to do, but I'll show you how to do that. So anyway, let's get started. So when you go to order a set of these lights from Amazon or eBay in the $60 to $120 range, they're probably just going to come in a black box like this. A lot of these lights are from China and have no name attached to them, and what sellers do is just go ahead and stick their company name or logo or make up one and go ahead and sell these things. That being said, uh, these are much cheaper and a pretty good value. The name brand ones are pretty cool, but they're in the $400 to $600 range. So when we open these, uh, you just got these foam pads in here. And you got the lights. And here is what this one looks like. This one has a low beam here, high beam here, and then it's got these two lights here. And if you notice on here, the plug that this is using is called a H4 connector or H4 plug. And then with this kit, you also get a H4 to H13 adapter. Definitely hold on to this. You will need this to install the lights. And originally they are meant to just be plugged right into the H4 connector like this and plug into your factory headlights. But unfortunately that's not going to work for us directly so I'll go ahead and show you how to do it. But this is basically what you get. Also if you go ahead and look at the back of the lights there are three tabs on here which are kind of important for the adapter kit because you you're going to have to line these up perfectly with the uh, adapter kit in order to get them to fit properly. I also actually bought a second set of lights as well. These are a bit different th than the other ones. Obviously the design is different, but how these differentiate is these have a halo around them and that halo is used for both the driving lights and the turn signals. So when you're driving on the road, normally these will light up a white color like regular halos. And also when you go to make a turn uh, and use your turn signal these will light up a amber collar and as you can see on here they kind of follow the same premise as the other one you still got these three little tabs back here in the same spot this one may be a little bit nicer it's got a place to let out moisture and air but one really important thing to note about these if you do want to go ahead and use that halo and turn signal function is there are additional wires that you will need to wire up on here I will briefly show you how to do this in this video but just a heads up and of course this kit also came with a H4 to H13 adapter as well, which is pretty cool. Almost all of them should, but if it doesn't, you could go ahead and order one. They're only like 10 bucks, not that expensive. So when you order one of these adapter kits, I'll go ahead and show you everything you get in the kit. So the first thing in the box are going to be the main assembly of the adapters. These are actually 3D printed carbon fiber nylon and they're actually super strong here. Like I'm, I'm really pushing it and pulling it in. 
these things are really strong. The next item in the box are going to be these metal retaining rings. These uh, metal retaining rings are actually a off-the-shelf component for Jeeps and whatnot, but we're using them here to basically clamp down the headlight onto the main adapter. So what I could do is just go ahead and rotate this metal retaining ring to the correct position, and then this is how we're going to clamp down the headlight. So the next thing in the kit are these 3D printed studs, so let's have a look right here and these studs connect directly to the main part of the adapter by screwing in and what these studs do is pop directly into our OEM headlight assembly without the need to do any type of modifications and then the last thing that you get with the kit are these screws right here and what these are used for is simply to screw the metal retaining ring into the main part of the adapter so I just went ahead and put the 3D printed studs on the main part of the adapter, and then we can go ahead and put the headlight in. But I do want to note that these adapters are side specific, so you do have a driver's side and you do have a passenger side. They aren't interchangeable. And how you can kind of tell which side is which is both of them make an L shape, one of them backwards, one of them forwards, and the studs that are farther apart are on the bottom and the studs that are closer together go vertically. So when you go to put these headlights in, you need to put them in the right way or they're not going to fit right. So as you can see on the adapter, we got these three little indentations. And on the headlight itself, we got these three little tabs right here. So basically, we need to line these tabs up with the indentations on the headlights. Now that we know that this is the bottom of the headlight and this is the top of it, we can go ahead and put it in. And also a good indication to help you line it up is if your headlight has some kind of DOT stamp on it, that could help too. So let's just go ahead and see set this in here and we might have to rotate it a bit so now we got our headlight in here and it is very snug and it's not going to be able to rotate either direction to become crooked so next thing that we could do is just to add our metal retaining ring you might have to rotate it a little bit to find out where each of the tabs line up but once you do that you can go ahead and clamp it down here like this because this one has a bezel ring, this one is a little bit harder to get on and it's more of a tight fit. But after you go ahead and do some pressing to each one of the sides, it will fit in here. Okay, so now it looks really good and what we could just go ahead and do is use the included screws to start screwing it down. Let's go ahead and start here. Alright, so I just went ahead and screwed everything down, and now the adapter is basically one with the headlights. Now when you go to screw in your headlights yourself, you may actually notice that the metal retaining ring doesn't actually sit flat with the adapter. That's not due to any design fault, it actually has to do with the headlight itself. So these specific model of headlights right here actually have this huge bezel on it, and some of the headlights do, some of them don't. So if you have a headlight with a larger bezel, it might go ahead and stick up a little bit. Don't worry, this isn't going to affect anything but I just wanted to note that there are tons of different headlights out there with bezels or no bezels and varying thicknesses so basically if your metal retaining ring isn't sitting exactly flat with the adapter that's actually due to the different sized headlights now these adapters have been carefully designed to allow you to fit a whole range of different headlights now I do want to say just as a disclaimer that not every single headlight out there has been tested to fit this perfectly because there's literally hundreds and hundreds of designs and they're always coming out with new ones, but for the most part, these things should fit fine. Alright, so before I begin, I gotta go ahead and actually take off this grill guard right here. Uh, I'll show you how to do it because a lot of H3s out there do have it. Uh, if you don't have one, you can just go ahead and skip to the next steps, but let's get started on that. So to take the grill guard off, all you're going to need is a 24 millimeter socket, an 18 millimeter socket, a impact or even a larger ratchet. Uh, a smaller ratchet with an extension on it with a Torx 30 or a T30 and then a pair of vice grips. Alright, let's go ahead take our impact and our 24 millimeter put that on then take our vice grips put the vice grips on the nut and then the impact on the bolt click come off Go ahead and stick this on just like that. Okay, let's do the same thing over here. Grab our T30 or Torx 30 and take this little middle one off right there. You want to do that first before you do the 18 millimeters because this is a very small bolt and then you could just hand loosen it. Here it is. Super easy to come out. 
All right, perfect. Now we can go ahead and loosen our 18 millimeter bolts. But before we do that, this D-ring bracket right here is actually sandwiching this grow guard in. So once we go to loosen this, this is gonna wanna fall on us. So what we should do is go ahead and just grab anything. I'm using some cinder blocks and place it right under here. So we have somewhere for this thing to fall. Okay, so we got here, and then I'm gonna use a towel to kind of hold it so I don't scratch it. And this will help keep it up. Let's grab our 18 millimeter. All right, 18 millimeter on. Okay. And this came right out. Oh, and it looks like our uh, T30, Torx 30, the little, uh, uh, bolt holder that keeps it in came out so we could just go ahead and pop that back in don't want to lose that make sure to keep everything together perfect and perfect now we can go ahead and grab our grill guard should come off easily and then take it off and then find a place to set it down just like that and we're good now the h3's grill is held in by six 10 millimeter bolts and four plastic clips so four of the bolts are going to be located on the top of the grill so there's going to be one right there one right here one right here and one right there we can go ahead and zoom in and have a closer look so the first one right here you can see it and then there's another one to match right there. Now if you come around to the side of the H3, you gotta kinda like come right in here. You can see that there is another one hanging right back in there. And if we go ahead and look at the other side right here, there is a same one. And then the last two ones that you're gonna see are gonna be right inside of here. You can see that one and then another one to match on the side. In addition to the bolts, the grill is held on by some plastic clips on the left and the right side over there. If we go ahead and take a look here, and kind of pull this grill out and you can see that there's a plastic clips. I've actually broken, I think, both of these uh, plastic clips already because I've taken this grill off so many times. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can link a replacement to these clips because I'll probably want to re replace mine. But yeah, when you go to take this grill off, you're gonna have to pull on this side right here and that side after you've taken off all six bolts, of course. Go ahead and take our 10 millimeter and work on getting all six bolts out. So there's one, that's number two, come around to here, then we got this one right here. These ones uh, on the side here come out really easily, you just gotta loosen them a little bit and then you can hand loosen them off the rest of the way. Alright now let's go ahead and put our extension on and get these last bolts out. And there's our bolt. And you don't actually need to worry about these bolts falling into here at all because there's like plastic right here that will prevent it from uh, falling. So that's nice. And here's the last bolt. All right, so now the grill guard's free. Nothing's holding it on. Remember, we do have the clips on the left and the right. Uh, I'm gonna probably make it look really easy taking this out because I've taken my grill guard out so many times that I've kind of broken the clips. But that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, pulled that side out, and the other side came out. Both of my clips are broken there. But yeah, that's it. And now we can go ahead and just put this off to the side. The next thing that we have to do is remove the headlight housing, or the headlight lens, from the actual headlight assembly. Now this is where the tutorial kind of splits off into two different directions. So if you plan on installing 7 inch headlights with a turn signal function, you're going to need to remove the entire headlight assembly. The reason we need to take it off is to get to the turn signal harness. From there we can go ahead and tap into one of the turn signal wires in order to power our turn signal function on our headlights. 
But if you're just running a regular pair of headlights, you don't necessarily need to take that assembly off. Now you may be wondering, what does any of that have to do with removing the headlight housing? Well, it is actually easier to remove the housing if the assembly is off the truck rather than on it. Also, it is a bit safer to separate the housing from the assembly. Now, the reason why I say that is there is a small possibility that you can break the studs on the headlight housing. Accidentally breaking one of those studs won't have any impact on our install because we're no longer going to be using that housing, but just as a word of caution. So yeah, for those that are going to be running regular headlights, it's up to you if you want to go ahead and remove the whole assembly or just pop them off on the truck. I definitely think you can get away with popping them off on the truck without breaking anything, but I just want it to be straightforward about it. It. So I'll quickly show you how I pop the housing off while on the truck. So the headlight housing is actually held on by these three metal studs that are on the assembly. Basically they're just these skinny little studs that have a ball head on them and they're held in place on the housing by these specialized clips. So to make it easier to get off you kind of have to pry them open with a longer flathead or something to try to get them open and then the headlight comes off easier. This is why I was saying if you remove the whole headlight assembly and then go to take off the lens it's much easier to get a flathead or anything like that like that in there and pry those open. After prying them open a little bit, you can use some type of tool. I'm using a crescent wrench to get some leverage and pop each individual stud out. Okay, so I popped one. Now, where's number two gonna be? Oh, there goes another one. Right here. I got one last one. Oh, yeah, and I popped it off. And I didn't break anything. Now in order to get this headlight assembly off, there are a couple of bolts that you will need to undo. Some of them you can see on screen right now. Uh, the first ones are going to be right here. As you can see here, there is a 10 millimeter one and then a 7 millimeter one. And then below that, down here, there is another 10 millimeter one. And then also, I can't really show this one on camera. But if we go around to over here, right back in here, I'm not going to be able to show it, but there's one right under there. And then once you got those off, this is actually, this piece right here is a little bracket and that's going to need to be removed. If we go ahead and zoom in here, you can kind of see that this bracket kind of holds on to this. So once you undo that 10 millimeter and seven millimeter bolt, this will be able to come right out. Now you couldn't really see it in the last shot, but that bottom bolt actually has this kind of metal wire thing attached to it. Uh, it's important to take note of this because when you go to put the headlight assembly back on, you want this uh, wire metal thing in the exact same spot. You don't want this to sit behind it or you could have some issues with spacing. Alright, so now we can go ahead and remove this bracket. To do that, just kind of slip it out of this hole, and it comes right out. Here's that bolt that I was talking about earlier. Kind of hard to see. And here's the bolt. Now we can go ahead and take the headlight assembly out. However, there's kind of a trick to it. Uh, on this headlight assembly, there's actually this uh, little hook right here. So in order to get it out, we kind of have to angle it in a sense. Pull up on this fender flare a little bit, and then it should come out. Also, your metal pin thing that I showed you earlier, this little metal wire thing might be in the way, so you might have to push that down. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. So pull up on this, bring this out right here. Now that's free from here, and we'll pull up on it. Disconnect all of these harnesses. So this one right here is the headlight one, so let's go ahead and pop that one out. This is the main harness, pop that one out. Uh, now we have this one back here. This is the side markers. We can just go ahead and twist that out and there's the bulb to it. And that's literally everything. And here's me taking them off when the entire assembly is off the truck. Basically, it's just a little bit easier to get a better angle on it when you go to pry them and then pop them out. Okay, popped another one. Yep, came out. No damage to the housing or any of the headlight assemblies. So just try to get under there with whatever you got. Just make sure it's soft and you're not going to scratch everything. So 
So now let's go ahead and talk about how we can actually wire these things up. Uh, for this part, I'm just going to be talking about how to get the low beam and the high beam to work properly. So as I mentioned before, these headlights aren't really plug and play. Technically, they do plug in. It's just that they don't work. And the reason why they don't work is because these new lights are LEDs and they're polarity sensitive. Our factory lights, which are halogens, are not polarity sensitive. And unfortunately, the H3 doesn't have the correct polarity for you to just go ahead and plug these in and have them work right off the bat. So what we could do to fix this problem is to reverse the polarity. And I know that sounds complicated, but all we got to do to reverse it is to add a harness in between the factory harness and these new lights. So in this video, I'll show you two different ways to wire up two different harnesses. And the reason why I'm showing that is Alpha H3T is recommending that you use this one type of harness, but I also found another type of harness that seems to work just as well and accomplishes the exact same thing. So once you're done watching this video, you can be the judge and decide which harness you want to go to. Honestly, they both accomplish the same thing. It's just whichever one you want to go with. So before we get into it, I want to briefly show you what the harnesses look like. So Alpha H3T's pick is this. This is basically a relay kit that switches the polarity. It has some really long technical names, so throughout this video I'll just be calling it a relay kit or relay harness kit. And the other harness is these two little polarity converter boxes. The only thing that I can knock these for is these don't really have a brand attached to them. They all seem to be made in China. They got like Chinese writing on them. And this harness is from a USA company. It's from a place called Online LED Store. So this one may be a little bit more reputable and I think that's why Alpha H3T went with it. Once I go to install these and show you how to do it, you'll definitely pick out some of the pros and cons to each one. So anyway, let's get right into it. So now let's go ahead and break down this wiring diagram. Don't worry, this looks kind of complicated, but it's really not. It's quite simple. So to begin, let's go ahead and start at the car battery over here. This 9 volt obviously just represents the car battery. So that goes to a red wire. The red wire is obviously a positive wire that goes to the positive terminal of the battery. Then that goes to a fuse right here. And then that goes into a set of two relays right here. From there, it breaks off into two different sides. First side is the driver side, the other side is the passenger side light. Let's go ahead and look at the driver side first. And as we do, we can kind of see that the driver side actually breaks off into two different wires. So let's go ahead and look at this one first. This one right here basically turns into a H4 plug. And what this right here is, is our H4 to H13 adapter. This should come with basically any set of lights that you get it will not come with this harness kit right here, but basically when you go to buy any sets of these seven inch round headlights, these should come with it. If you don't, you can go ahead and order them online. They're only like 10 bucks. And as you can see here, this H4 goes to an H13, which plugs into the factory OEM harness. As you can see here, this is just my phone. I got like a picture of the OEM harness, kind of what it looks like. You know, if I like zoom in here, you can see that's what the OEM harness looks like. So that's why I have my phone sitting like that. So as you can see here, this green plug right here, which is a H4 connection, comes out of the 7 inch light and almost all these 7 inch lights have a H4 plug. So as I said this is a H4 plug and the harness itself has a H4 plug so these fit perfectly and if you notice right here we have a ground so we will need to ground this somewhere in the vehicle and I will be showing you that. I just have like a, a bolt over here kind of just to show you the concept and now we can go ahead and look at the other light over here. This uh, wiring in the middle obviously is just bunched up because the wiring setup in real life is a lot longer and if we go over here we see the same thing. We have a H4 female plug that goes into a H4 male plug right here and then of course we have our ground wire. So both of these right here match. It's just on this side we have our H4 to H13 adapter and that's literally all it takes to set this up. It seems complicated but it's really not and I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like on the truck and how to wire it up. So here is a really important bit of information about the H4 to H13 adapters and that is to make sure the wiring that goes across is correct. So blue goes to blue, white goes to white, and black goes to black. That's fine. However, I ordered a second set of lights and it did come with its own H4 to H13 adapter, which is nice. Don't mind the plug, it looks different. But what we need to look at is the wires. Look at that. Instead of a blue wire here, we have a white wire. And instead of a white wire here, we have a blue wire. 
And that is a problem because these two wire here control the high and low beams. And by switching these around, we're inverting the high and low beams. So you really need to make sure that the coloring on the wire is correct. And if it's not, you might have to switch these around in order to get them to work properly. All right, so now let's go ahead and wire up these lights by using the relay harness method. So for this, you'll obviously need the harness itself, the lights, H4 to H13 adapters. And you'll actually only be needing one for this kit. You, um, the other one you won't need. So to start, let's just go ahead and place our harness right into here like this. We're not going to be zip tying anything yet or anything like that. What we want to do first is make sure everything works. So we're going to get the approximate locations of where everything should be. So to start, the relay should be somewhere around here by the fuse box. And on this harness, we have two H4 connectors which plug into the headlights. So the one that's longer, that extends longer, should be on the passenger side. And the one that's kind of short, that comes out of the wire loom, should be on the driver's side. So we can go ahead and start with this one first. And if you notice on this H4 connector, we have a ground, which we will need to wire up. Now the easiest place to reach for a ground is right here. If you just go ahead and undo this bolt with a 10 millimeter, you can go ahead and use this as a ground. Now personally, I don't think that this is a fantastic spot because as you can kind of see here, water can kind of run down here and get onto it. So a better place would be to drill a hole somewhere down here and make a ground out of it. Obviously sand it down with some sandpaper you're gonna need a drill with like a 90 degree angle but if you can't do that uh, I guess this would be your best bet so now let's go ahead and get our driver side in position so we can go ahead and run the h4 connector through right here and then we can wire our ground just by kind of sliding it through right here and then connecting it through here and tighten it up and we're done but again, if you can find a better spot for it somewhere in here, I'm personally recommending right here. I think that's the way to go, but yeah, you can use that. And for demonstration purposes, I'm just doing it right here. So next up, let's do that exact same thing on the driver's side. Just go ahead and thread our H4 connector around here. Send our ground right through here. Get our 10 millimeter ratchet and socket. Get that under there, tighten it up. Okay, we got that in position. All right, so now that we got both the passenger and driver's side H4 harnesses connected, we still don't have any power. And the way that we need to get power is simply by using one of these H4 to H13 adapters that I was talking about earlier. And how this works is this H13 actually just plugs into the factory harness right here, which happens to be an H13. So click this in. And then on our new harness, if you see here, we do have a new plug that is an H4. So these will plug in. Obviously, I gotta wire it through like this. So go ahead and plug these in, just like that. And so now we'll have some power to it. The last thing that we're gonna have to do is connect this red wire right here to the positive side of the battery terminal. And your terminal should have this uh, accessory plug, this nut that allows for accessories to be plugged in. So let's go ahead, slide that in there. And now everything should be wired up and we can go ahead and plug in our headlights. So first one over here. The H4 plugs can be a little hard to get in so don't press anything too too hard in there or one of the uh, wires might pop out. So we got that on just like that and then now let's take our other one plug it right in. All right, we plug that one right in. And if you notice on this side right here, we will not actually be using this H13 plug. So we are only taking power from the driver's side of the harness. We don't need a H13 to H4 plug over here. We only need one on that side. So it would be best if you go ahead and just tape this up because you will not be using it. Oh, and if you notice right here, one of my H4 plugs have came out. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and take this back out and fix this because as i kind of said the h4 plugs sometimes will pop out on you so let's go ahead and slide this back in here and hold it from the back while we put in our headlight all right so now we got our headlight in just like that and now we can go ahead and see if we did everything correctly and test this simply by turning the h3 on turning the electronics you don't need to crank the truck and make sure our regular low beams are on not our high beams to start and if we come around to here, 
both of them are working and it's kind of hard to see on camera because the headlights are so bright but only the low beam are on right now so we also need to check to make sure the high beams are functioning normally so now let's go ahead and click on our high beams and yes both of them are on as you can kind of see here so on this particular set of lights the high beam is this big one right here and the low beam is this little one up here depending on the headlights that you have that might be different or they might be placed in a different place you know it all kind of depends on the design if you want you can go ahead and flick on and off the headlights you know just to test them as you can see that's high beam that's low beam just to make sure that they work continuously but as you see here i'm flipping them on and off and they are working perfectly so now that you got the lights working everything is good you can go ahead and wire it up for real i'm personally not going to be using this harness to wire this truck up but i'll go ahead and give you some pointers on how i would wire this up so for our passenger side h4 plug you know the one that goes right over here how i'd wire this is by wiring it all the way under here and connecting it down here so to start let's go ahead and set the camera right down into here and then we can go ahead and fit our H4 plug through this way. We'll go ahead and start wiring it right under here, like that. And it'll eventually sit up here like this. So keep going right there. As we head over here, it gets a little bit tight up in here, but if you just go ahead and slide it like that, up through here, it'll fit no problem. And then now, if you take a look, without even any zip ties, it's starting to look clean. You can't even see it under here. And now that we got it to over here, like this, we're basically good. We can just go ahead and plug it in. If there's any excess wire, I would just go ahead and zip tie that up so it doesn't make a mess. Good, we got our H4 plug right here, ready to go. We got it grounded. And personally, I wouldn't want to put my ground there. I would want to drill a hole right down here and screw, uh, scuff up the paint and go ahead and put my ground right here. But just for this demonstration, I'm showing you right there. Obviously, don't be lazy. Go ahead and put some zip ties up here so this looks nice and clean and it never falls. As it stands now, the driver's side H4 plug already looks pretty good right here. I would just go ahead and clean up some of the wiring in the back. Now, we're definitely going to have to clean up this part right here, you know, the fuse that's connected to the battery and our relays and whatnot. So one way you could run the positive red wire is this way uh, down to here. Personally, I don't really like it that much because it's close to the fan right there. But a lot of H3s do have a tube that goes from here to, to down here. Basically, and it's an accessory tube meant for wiring up accessories, which is really nice. This H3, unfortunately, doesn't have it. So if you got one of those, that might be a good option to do. However, the wire might not be long enough, so you may need to extend that wire if you do it that way. If, if you don't want to use the tube, I guess you could just do it like that not really ideal so the way i would personally want to do it is to extend this red wire right here and have it run all the way from here down into here and then have your relay sit right here and also i would really recommend you use some wire loom this is basically just like plastic tubing you see this all over the vehicle and how this works is basically you just kind of press it on like like this and it goes on so again, if you do want to go ahead and mount this relay around this area, you will have to drill a hole right here. I would just recommend right here because you can easily get a drill right into here without needing any type of an extension or anything like that. You could go ahead and try to find a factory hole or try to zip tie it, but drilling a hole in there would be the way to go. So as you can see here, this is what the relays would look like mounted. The bolt on the bottom is actually for my ground because that's where I'm putting it. And then the last thing in here would just be to clean up your wires a little bit and then you should be good. So now that we got this harness in, we've cleanly wired it up, we can actually go ahead and move on to mounting the LEDs. But before we get to that, I do want to go ahead and show you how this other way works, which is the polarity converter box method. So there's two different harnesses you can use. They both accomplish the same thing, but I want to go ahead and show you this one and see if you like it better. So now let's go ahead and look at the other setup we could do, which is this little polarity converter box right here. And as you can see, the setup overall isn't that hard. So the box itself is actually made up of a female 
and a male H4 plug with a ground on it, obviously. And then, as you can see here, the female plugs into the male of the LED light, and then that goes to a ground, and then also the male end of it goes to our H4 to H13 adapter. Obviously, this H13 plugs right into your factory harness, so no need for cutting or anything, and we're actually going to be using both of them instead of only using one, like on the other harness, which is actually kind of nice, because then you don't need to go put tape on the other one or anything like that. And obviously, unlike the other harness, these are independent of each other, so we don't need to connect them. So right here is one self-contained unit, and there is another one right here. So the nice thing about this is you don't have to wire anything across, and the wiring setup is going to be a lot easier. The only big negative that I could see about these is that there isn't any name brand ones. The only ones you can get are these Chinese manufactured one, and there isn't really a company behind it. You could just go ahead and buy them on Amazon and eBay without any name attached to it. So for what they are, they do actually look pretty waterproof. As you can see here, this whole housing here is completely sealed off, which is nice, and you can't open this at all, even if you wanted to. So this thing is pretty good and actually sealed but in terms of reliability I can't speak on that it would actually be pretty interesting to make a video in six months to a year to see how these hold up and to see if they're as good as the relay harness kit so that's the one big negative that I see towards that but in terms of wiring these are actually a lot simpler so it's kind of whatever you want to do for the setup now let's go ahead and mount our polarity converter and just for reference uh, our headlight is gonna go right here where my hand is going and that's where our plug is gonna be so we're going Going to put the box right here. This hole right here is actually a factory hole, but this hole right here with the bolts in it is something that I already did. Basically, I drilled into it and that's going to be my ground. Again, you can go ahead and use the ground that up here. That being said, let's go ahead and take our bolt, thread it right through. Now we can just hand tighten this on for now. All right, we hand tighten it down here. It definitely could be a lot tighter, but that's good for start. Now we can add our ground. I right, got it pretty hand tight. I'll have to tighten that later. All right, now we can go ahead and take our H4 to H13 and plug this in. So we plug this right up like that, and then now we plug that into our factory harness. Let's click this in here. Okay, that's in there. And now we are ready to plug in our headlights. This light right here actually connects to the light, so we can go ahead and do that. Just go ahead and put this through, like here. So now, as you can see right here, this is our polarity converter. This is our H4 connector. And now we can go ahead and plug in our headlight. So just right like this. And we're good. All right, now we can go ahead and do the other side. And then that. Click those in. When we go to plug it in, it's going to just go like this. And yep, we got it in. Now just like the other harness, go ahead and turn the truck on and make sure the polarity converter boxes are working normally. Test the low and high beam functions on them, make sure they're working normally. And when I went to go do mine the first time, it worked perfectly. Okay, so earlier I did say that we were going to cover how to wire up the turn signal and the daytime running light function, but unfortunately this video is already getting kind of long, so what I'm going to do instead is make that video its own separate video. So what you guys can do now is pause this video and go ahead and watch this one right now. And then once you're done watching that, you can go ahead and come back here, finish the video, and then you'll be good. Or if you guys just want to keep watching this video all the way through and then watch that one right after, you definitely can. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Now we can go ahead and put our headlight assembly piece back in. So the first thing that we got to do is plug back in our side marker bulb. Then we could pull up on this and push this in. And then now let's hook this in here. So now just kind of line that in there. Then we can go ahead and slide our piece in here. And it is in. When you're putting your headlight assembly back in, make sure that the top part, the plastic part, isn't actually touching against the body of the H3. There should be a little gap in between them. If there's little to no gap, that's actually a big problem because when you go to put the truck back together, the grill and the hood will basically be right on top of each other and touching. So this problem is really easy to fix. All you got to do is add a washer behind the headlight assembly and that should fix it. So now we can go ahead and put this part back together. Obviously, we put our washer behind. 
Try to get it perfectly. It shouldn't actually fall since this is pressed up against here. So now our bracket and we can screw back in our bolts. So again, make sure this metal wire thing is in front of the headlight, like this, and not behind, because if it is, you're gonna have fitment issues. And as you can see here, we do have a good size gap. Okay, so now we are finally ready to put on the adapters. So earlier in the video, I did show you how you can assemble one of these headlights and put the headlight into it. We're actually not gonna be doing that when we go to mount it to the truck. Technically, you could just go ahead and pop it in, but it's a little bit risky and you do risk actually breaking one of these little 3D printed studs. So what we're gonna do is build up the headlight, putting it on piece by piece onto the truck. So let's go ahead and start by putting these 3D printed studs onto here. And let's see how hard these are going to be. So, with just a little tap. And perfect, this one went on. Now, I cannot stress this enough. Do not hit these studs really hard with a hammer. If you do, there's a possibility of some of this breaking off and you're going to have less of a secure fit. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this one on with little effort. Let's see. Oh, yeah, this one went on, no problem. And now our last one, let's see if this one will cooperate. So, let's go here, this one's a little bit harder. I'm hitting this decently hard, and this one doesn't want to go on. I don't want to hit it any harder. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and sand this down a little bit, and then go ahead and try to put it back in. Now, I did say I was going to sand it down, but I'm actually going to sand it down with a drill. This uh, bit fits in here, and I'm just going to kind of brush it up against the edges and see if I can sand it down that way a little. Okay, bored a good bit out, as you can see here. Now let's put it in. And there it goes. So now that we got our studs on, we can go ahead and put on our adapter ring. And on this adapter ring, these bolts that stick out are actually Allen key screws. So we can just go ahead and screw these in. And let's go ahead and take our Allen key and start screwing these in. All right, so now I got the main adapter on and it's pretty sturdy. Now, when I went to go tighten these up, I did notice it is a good idea to kind of just start tightening one down, do another one and do another one and evenly tighten them down at the same time. And then when I got close to getting them really tight, I needed to use a crescent wrench to stop the stud from spinning. So now we're ready to put in our headlight before we go ahead and start putting on the retaining ring. We gotta go ahead and connect it, so. Okay, so here's my turn signal function, daytime running lights. Then the last thing is to plug the H4 in. So now I got everything plugged in and we can go ahead and do the last step, which is to put on our metal retaining ring. So now this should be able to drop right into place. Just make sure you're matching up the tabs with this. They should be straight, obviously. Let's go ahead and put our ring on and rotate it. Let's see. Okay, now we got the correct position of the ring. So now let's get this first one in. Start tightening it down a little. Now let's get this one in. Now for our final one, and then after that we can go ahead and secure all of them down very tightly. And that, my friends, is it. Your new headlights are now on. Obviously, you got to do the other one, but that is basically the bulk of the installation. So now we got both headlights on, and it's already starting to look really good. Now we can go ahead and reassemble the whole front end of the truck, and we'll take it from there. All right, so now I got the truck outside and am aiming it right at a wall so we can go ahead and adjust the headlights. Because right out of the box, these might not be perfect and you may have to adjust the height at which the light sits in order for them to work properly and so you don't blind people. So as you can see right now, they're not perfect. Uh, the driver's side is a little bit taller than the other side. If I go ahead and cover one of them and then cover the other one, you can see one of them is much higher than the other. So let's go ahead and pop the hood real quick. 
and we can easily adjust them without having to take anything apart. So the adjustment mechanism for the headlights can actually be found on the headlight assembly right here. It just requires a seven millimeter socket and you can go ahead and twist it whichever way, one way's up and one way's down. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the beams a lot more down, maybe to somewhere around here. Now for the driver's side. Looks pretty good, but now the other one seems a little tall to me. So I'll bring that down. And that is much better. Maybe not perfect, but much better than it was before. Now that we're all done, let's go ahead and see what these new headlights look like. Because the headlights were so bright, it was kind of hard to show in video, so I took some higher quality pictures instead. Then after that, we can go ahead and get into some of the comparisons. So even though I've been mainly featuring this design of headlight in this video, when it came time to actually test it, I did actually use this light instead. And the reason why is a headlight like this, which has a dual lens or even a single lens, is going to be much better than a headlight like this that has a bunch of small LEDs in it. So I have two problems with this headlights. The first is it doesn't put out a good hotspot going down the road, and also the high beams on here aren't as good. Basically, the high beams on here are these small LEDs, and they basically create the these like very stretched oval looking shapes which aren't as good as these when you turn on the high beams. These seem to have more of a rectangular boxy look to them and these right here seem to cover a lot more down the road. That being said, these do seem a little bit brighter for the shorter distances. However, the beam of these, the total beam is much narrower. These seem to have a wider beam but a little bit dimmer. So that being said, this is still a much better headlight than the stock one. The stock one is just atrocious. So if you guys want to run it, just because it looks much cooler than this one, you definitely can. Here is a comparison of the stock beam pattern versus the new 7-inch light beam pattern. Both of these were taken at a distance of 25 feet, and the same camera settings were used for both shots. So here are the stock headlights. Nothing really good to say about them. And here are the new 7-inch lights, which are way brighter. You get a whole bar of brightness in comparison to two little spots of it. Now at this distance, the high beams produce these bright little circles, which is kind of an interesting artifact, but when you're driving on the road, you don't see those at all. Here is another test that I did, this time at 75 feet. Here's that same test zoomed in so you could really see the brightness of the high beams. And here's probably the most realistic test, just driving down a dimly lit road. Here is the 2006 H3 with the new 7 inch headlights in comparison to my Alpha that has the stock headlights. I also wanted to test the low and high beams with the drone. I went ahead and started with the stock headlights and honestly, they seem to almost get worse when you put them on high beams. It looks like the distance that they illuminate actually gets shorter and we don't actually see anything that's really far down the road. In comparison, the new seven inch lights do put out a good amount of light down the road. As you can see, it's lighting up those signs and mailboxes in the distance and the low beam pattern stays the same and doesn't get darker. 
And now we are completely finished. These things look way better than the stock headlights and actually perform a whole lot better than them as well. So a huge props to Lay's Designs for coming out with this adapter for the H3. There aren't that many companies interested in making new products for the H3. So anytime someone makes a new product for the H3, it's definitely exciting. Now before these adapters came out, there really wasn't a good option if you wanted to upgrade the headlights on your H3. Yes, there was the Star HID lights, which came in at around five to $600, but since then they've been discontinued. Uh, the other ones on the market right now are from HID projectors, but those are $800. But no, nah, I wouldn't spend that kind of money, especially if you're just starting an H3 build. Personally, I think there are way better ways that you could spend $800. For example, you can get yourself a winch plate and a winch, uh, get yourself some recovery gear, and now you'll be good if you get stuck off road. So thank you guys so much for watching this video to the end. I know it was a long one, but hopefully it gave you the confidence to go ahead and install these lights. So yeah, just as a reminder, I got the separate video where I show you how to wire up the turn signals and the DRL functions if you're looking to get a pair of headlights like that. So yeah, you can go ahead and watch that. That's on the channel right now. So anyway, I will see you guys later.